Hi folks and welcome to our Philos meal. It's good to have you with us. We have our regulars on the program. We've got Chris and Lawrence singing for our entertainment. But our special guest today is John Archer. John was the Magic Circle Stage Magician of the Year. And he also got through to the semi-finals of Britain's Got Talent in 2019. He is going to do a number of his tricks with some of the people that are in our fellows meal. So that's going to be a bit of fun for us today. Anyway, I hope you're sat with your afternoon tea and you're ready for us to begin. Hello, Finos friends, it's Chris here. Um, I'm going to sing a song for you, a couple of songs. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is a great upbeat tune called Let Your Love Flow. Here we go, sing along with me. <laughs> The sunshine sky, there's a reason why I'm feeling so high. Must be the season when the love light shines all around us. So let the feeling wrap you deep inside and send you reeling. Let your love 
Flow by the Bellamy Brothers. Hope you enjoyed that. Here's another couple of songs. Take care, folks. I'm 
sunshine, I got brave. And then I saw her face. Welcome to this month's Virtual Philos Quiz. As usual, I'd like to start by giving a quick shout out to the high scorers from last month. These people did score more than 16, so congratulations to Jane Campbell, Janice Leon and Vicky, and a super well done to Rani Melrose, who got the top score of the evening with 18 out of 20. This month, we're going to stick with 16 as the score to beat. So if you do score more than 16, I would love to know about it. So if you text your name and your score to 0797567 So to kick off, we'll get going with round one, question one, which is, on average, how long can beavers hold their breath for? A, up to five minutes. B, up to 10 minutes, or C, up to 15 minutes. On average, how long can beavers hold their breath for? A, up to five minutes, B, up to 10 minutes, or C, up to 15 minutes. Question two is conference and Williams are varieties of which fruit? Conference and Williams are varieties of which fruit? Question three is wire fox, smooth fox and toy fox are breeds of which type of dog? Wire fox, smooth fox and toy fox are breeds of which type of dog? Question four. What is the name of the first James Bond film that Daniel Craig starred in? What is the name of the first James Bond film which Daniel Craig starred in? Question five is what colour is the Mr. Men character, Mr. Happy? What colour is the Mr. Men character, Mr. Happy? Question six is what is the largest island in the Caribbean Sea? A, Cuba, B, Puerto Rico or C, Jamaica? What is the largest island in the Caribbean Sea? A, Cuba, B, Puerto Rico, or C, Jamaica? Question seven is how many prime numbers are there between one and 100? How many prime numbers are there between one and 100?
question eight is which famous boxer's real name was Cassius Clay? Which famous boxer's real name was Cassius Clay? Question nine is the Statue of Liberty was gifted to the USA by which country? The Statue of Liberty was gifted to the USA by which country? And the final question in round one is question 10, which is what is a group of giraffes known as? What is a group of giraffes known as? Now we will go through the answers for round one. So we move back to question one, which was on average, how long can beavers hold their breath for? A, up to five minutes, B, up to 10 minutes, or C, up to 15 minutes? And the correct answer is C, up to 15 minutes. Beavers can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes. Question two, was Conference and Williams are varieties of which fruit? And the correct answer is pear. So Conference and Williams are both varieties of pear. Question three, was Wire Fox, Smooth Fox and Toy Fox are breeds of which dog? And the correct answer is terrier. Wire Fox, Smooth Fox and Toy Fox are all breeds of terrier dogs. Question four was, what is the name of the first James Bond film which Daniel Craig starred in? And the correct answer is Casino Royale. So the first James Bond film which Daniel Craig starred in was Casino Royale. Question five was, which colour is the Mr. Men character, Mr. Happy? And the correct answer is yellow. So the Mr. Men character, Mr. Happy, was the colour yellow. Question six was, what is the largest island in the Caribbean Sea? A, Cuba. B, Puerto Rico or C, Jamaica? And the correct answer is A, Cuba. So the largest island in the Caribbean Sea is Cuba. Question seven was how many prime numbers are there between one and 100? And the correct answer is 25. There are 25 prime numbers between one and 100. Question eight was which famous boxer's real name was Cassius Clay? And the correct answer is Muhammad Ali. So Muhammad Ali's real name was Cassius Clay. Question nine, was the Statue of Liberty was gifted to the USA by which country? And the correct answer is France. The Statue of Liberty was gifted to the USA by France. And question 10, was what is a group of giraffes known as? And the correct answer is a tower. So a group of giraffes is known as a tower of giraffes. Now we will move on to round two, starting with question 11, 
which is approximately how many sweat glands do you have in your feet? A, 200,000, B, 250,000, or C, 300,000? Approximately how many sweat glands do you have in your feet? A, 200,000, B, 250,000, or C, 300,000? Question 12 is, what boarding school did Prince Philip attend? What boarding school did Prince Philip attend? Question 13 is, how many wives did Henry VIII have? How many wives did Henry VIII have? Question 14 is, which vitamin is the only one that you will not find in a standard chicken egg? What vitamin is the only one which you will not find in a standard chicken egg? Question 15 is the ever given ship was blocking the Suez Canal for how many days? The ever given ship was blocking the Suez Canal for how many days? Question 16 is during which decade was Dolly the sheep cloned? During which decade was Dolly the sheep cloned? Question 17 is true or false? There is a McDonald's fast food restaurant in every continent in the world except one. True or false, there is a McDonald's fast food restaurant in every continent in the world except one. Question 18 is, in French, what does sortir mean? In French, what does sortir mean? Question 19 is, how many brains does an octopus have? How many brains does an octopus have? And our final question of the quiz is question 20, which is, how many world titles has Phil Taylor won in darts? A, 12. B, 15, or C, 16? How many world titles has Phil Taylor won in darts? A, 12, B, 15, or C, 16? Now we will go through the answers for round two. So we move back to question 11 which was approximately how many sweat glands do you have in your feet? A, 200,000, B, 250,000, or C, 300,000? And the correct answer is B, 250,000. So in your feet, you have approximately 250,000 sweat glands. Question 12 was, what boarding school did Prince Philip attend? And the correct answer is Gordonston. So Prince Philip attended Gordonston School. Question 13 was, how many wives did Henry VIII have? And the correct answer is six. So Henry VIII 
had six waves. Question 14 was, which vitamin is the only one that you will not find in a standard chicken egg? And the correct answer is vitamin C. So vitamin C is the only vitamin that you will not find in a standard chicken egg. Question 15 was the ever given ship was blocking the Suez Canal for how many days? And the correct answer is six days. So the ever given ship was blocking the Suez Canal for six days. Question 16 was during what decade was Dolly the sheep cloned? And the correct answer is the 1990s. So Dolly the sheep was cloned in the 90s. Question 17 was true or false? There is a McDonald's fast food restaurant in every continent of the world except one. And the correct answer is true. So it is true that there is only one continent in the world which doesn't have a McDonald's fast food restaurant and that continent is Antarctica. Question 18 was in French what does sortir mean and it means exit. So in French sortir means exit. Question 19 was how many brains does an octopus have? And the correct answer is nine. So an octopus has nine brains. And the final question was question 20, which was how many world titles has Phil Taylor won in darts? A12, B15 or C16? And the correct answer is C16. So that's us completed the quiz for this month. And thank you all for joining and going through it with me. Next up, we have Lawrence, who's going to do a couple of songs for us, which then will be followed by John Archer, who's going to do his magic trick for you. And then Brian has interviewed John, so this will follow after the magic trick. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Evening ladies and gentlemen, this is the one by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Someone told me long ago There's a calm before the storm And I know It's been coming for some time When it's over, so they say It'll rain a sunny day And I know Shining down like water And I want to know Have you ever seen rain? And I want to know Have you ever seen rain? Coming down 
just about a year ago I set out on the road Seeking my fame and fortune Looking for a pot of gold Well, things got bad and things got worse I guess you know the tune Oh Lord, stuck in Lodi again Rode in on a greyhound I'll be walking out if I go I was just passing through Must be seven months or more Well, I ran out of time and money Looks like they took my friends Oh Lord, I'm stuck in Lodi again The magazine said I was on my way. Somewhere I lost connection, ran out of songs to play. Well, I came in the town on a one night stand. Looks like my plans fell through. Oh Lord, stuck in Lord I again. If I only had a dollar for every song I sung And every time I had to play where people sat there drunk Well, you know I'd catch the next train back to where I live Oh Lord, stuck in Lord I again Oh Lord, stuck in Lord I again Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and and and, and, and Ranny, um, watch carefully. I have here one, two, three, four, five, six cards, and I throw away one, two, three. But when I count the cards, I've still got one, two. Ah, I know what went wrong. <laughs> I forgot to do the special magic move. This is it. It doesn't do you much good, but it does me the world of good. And now, hopefully, I should have all together one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Thank you. Yeah. Need somebody to uh, to help me uh, with a, a, a two digit number, Rani. Um, you can give me a two digit number. It's got to be higher than thirty three because what I'm about to do is impossible to do with a number of less than thirty four. So any number, it's not impossible. Pardon? Fifty three. Fifty three. Fifty three. Are you sure? Fifty three. 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 What I'm going to do now is try and break a world record with that chosen number of 53 in less than 28 seconds. So I need somebody who's got a watch or a phone or something that, who can time me. Who can time me? Yeah. Anybody? I Come on. Know, OK, OK. Uh, Lawrence, isn't it? Lawrence, you're in charge yeah. of timing. You're All right. Here. I want you to give me a, a little countdown. You can say three, two, one, go. And then when you say go, I'm going to st start and try and break my world record. So, so wh whenever you're ready. Hold what on, was the number again, Rani? 53? Mm -hmm. 53. 
53. Okay, Leslie, I'm ready when you are. Three, Three two, two, one, go. go. Excellent. Don't forget, every five seconds, I want you to shout out nice and loud for me. Bye. That was a little bit quicker than I was expecting, to be honest. <laughs> Ten. Can you do me a favour? Leave a, get a bigger gap between each five seconds. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, you're kidding me. I'm not going to do this. Uh, Twenty. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been terrible if I didn't do this. Twenty-five. Stop! How long was that? Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. <laughs> Just a cheap watch. I was trying to break twenty-eight. Was it not twenty-seven and a half? It could have been. <laughs> it hasn't got a stop thing on. I've just got to count the pointers. Uh, you were a bit late. I think it was twenty-seven and a half. That's a new world record, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, it's not good. You don't believe me. Look, I'm going to show you what I did in, in twenty-eight seconds. I've equaled my own world record, uh, and Randy chose the number. Uh, 53 but look if we look at this 13 plus 10 is 23 plus 22 is, is 45 plus the 8 at the bottom is 53 53 that's right and 23 plus 7 that's 3 it's just drawn quickly 23 plus 7 is 30 plus 14 is 44 plus the 9 is 53, 53. Look, there's a big clue on the back if anybody's struggling with the maths I've tried to make this easy for you alright look at this 6 plus 20 is 26, plus the 12 there is 38, plus the 15 is? 53. 53. Plus 16 is 27, plus the 5 is 32, plus the 21 is? 53. 53, thank you very much. Yay. No, it's even better than that. When I show you what I've actually done on this board, with Rani's chosen number of 53 in 28 seconds, you'll burst into spontaneous applause without that slight awkward gap as if to say, so what, I hope he's not getting paid too much. Now, Watch carefully as we go horizontal. Look at this. 13 plus 23 is 36. Plus the 6 is 42. Plus the 11 is 53. And 10 plus 7 is 17. Plus 20 is 37. Plus the 16 is? 53. 53. That's right. And 22 plus 14 is 36. Plus the 12 is 48. Plus the 5, 53. And 8 and 9 is 17. Plus 15 is 32. Plus the 21 is? 53. <laughs> No, no, I'm going to keep going until this gets what it deserves. It's even better than that. When I show you what I've actually done on here, you'll probably want to march me shoulder high around the building, which is impossible because we're all in different buildings. But look at this. Uh, she could have packed any number she liked, Randy, but she picked the number 53. There it is. Uh, and it had horizontally inverted. But look at the corner numbers. Got 21 in this corner, plus an 8 there is 29. Plus a 13 there is, is um, it, 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 plus 11, it trust me, it's 53. And <laughs> diagonally, that's what I said, Leslie, diagonally, look at this. 8 and 14 is 22, plus a 20 is 42, plus the 11 is? 53. 53. 53 that's right. And 13 plus 7 is 20, plus the 12 is 32, plus the 21 is? 53. <laughs> Horizontally, vertically, diagonally, and the corner numbers. Yay! Yay! Wow. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> It's even better than that. Exactly. And you get this for free. You're spoiled. You really are. Look at this. Horizontally, vertically, and diagonally on the corner numbers. But look at the four numbers in the middle. 14 plus 12 plus 20 plus 7 is 53. And 5 plus 12 plus 15 plus, plus 12, 21, is 53. And 14 plus 9 plus 8 plus 22 is 53. And 13 plus 10 plus 7 plus 23 is 53. And 11 plus 6 plus 20 plus 16 is 53. In fact... Any group of four numbers, you can add up those four, or those four, or those four, or those four. You can, add, you can add the top two to the bottom two. You can add those two to those two. You can add those two to those two, or those two to those two. Over 75 combinations of 53 in 28 seconds. Now! <laughs> oh. Going to try something else now. I'm going to try a little <laughs> couple of mind reading tricks before I go. Um, the first one I'm going to try is, uh, is with the deck of cards. So I've got a deck of cards here. And I'm going to tell you what I've done. In the deck of cards, I've taken one of the cards and I've turned it the wrong way around. It could be any of the cards. And we're going to make a joint decision on which card that is. And I'll keep these cards in full view throughout. So I can't do anything suspicious. I'll hold them just by the ends. I won't do anything, I promise. Um, so let me see. Uh, Doreen, you're going to make the first decision. Doreen, do you want these? Do you want the card? My predicted card, do you think it's a red card or a black card? A black card. 
Okay, you think it's a black card. Very, very good. Uh, let me see. Albert. Yeah. The card in here is a black card because Dorian's decided. Albert, do you think that it is a club or a spade? A club. You think it's a club. Very good. So it's a black card. It's a club. Uh, Leslie. Do you yeah. think it's do you, do you think it's a picture card, Leslie, or do you think it's a number card? A number. A number card. Mm -hmm. It's not a jack, queen, or king. It's a number between one and ten, and we know it's a spade because Albert said it's a spade. Um, uh, Mary, you're going to have to unmute yourself. You've got to make a decision. Okay, mm -hmm. so Doreen's decided it's black. Albert's decided it's a spade. Leslie's decided it's a number. You've got to decide what number you think it is. One through to ten. What do you think the number is? Seven. Seven. So the seven of spades. Are we all happy that that was fair? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take. I'm going to take the cards out of the box very, very carefully. Make sure I don't do anything suspicious. I'm going to take the cards out of the box, and I'm going to very carefully spread through the cards. And we should see one card in this deck is the wrong way around, as I promised. Just one card. Okay. But remember. Doreen, you decided it was black. Albert, you decided it was a spade. Leslie, you decided it was a number card. And Marie, you decided it was the seven of spades. And the one card in this deck facing the wrong way around is... The seven <laughs> of spades. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, I'm going to try one little experiment, but I, 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 I need somebody who can help me. I, I, is anybody there got a mobile phone with them that's got the internet? Yeah. Who's got a mobile phone that they can, they can go on the internet with them? Or an iPad? Yeah. Anybody? I've got the mobile phone. Uh, Rani, you've got a mobile phone. Hi. Okay, I'll tell, I'll tell you what I want you to do for me, if you would, please, is um, I need you to... Um, are, are, you, are you logged on and everything? Hi. Okay, Rani, what I'd like you to do, if you would, please... Um, we're gonna we're gonna choose some random words in a moment. We're gonna choose them from the internet, and we're gonna use the Wikipedia because Wikipedia is probably one of the biggest collection of words and articles on the internet. So what I want you to do is um, search for anything you like on Wikipedia. So um, you know any subject you like, and, and just type in a search. But don't tell me what you're searching. Okay. 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 Now, are you happy with what you're searching, or, or do you think you've gone for? Uh, do you think you've gone for something that lots of people would go for? Uh, maybe not. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Is, uh, as it's probably come up with a picture and some articles and, and information about that what? thing. Would you scroll through? Would you scroll through the text? Yeah. Okay. And then what I want you to do is just to think of one a random word. On that text, but don't choose a little word. Choose a choose a big word with three or four syllables. A difficult word for me, okay? So three or four okay. syllables anywhere in the text about the article that you're thinking of. Uh, okay. Yes. Have you got a word? Got it. Okay. Time. You've got a word. I do. Okay. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and work out what word you're thinking of first of all and uh, so just concentrate on concentrate on the letters and um is there an e in your word um rani it, uh, there, uh, yeah just let me get my pen and paper oh hey you're, you're taking this seriously i am so you see so you've go you've googled a random subject and then you've scrolled through and thought of a random word on that subject yeah. And we know right. okay. over six billion words that you could be thinking of. Right. Yeah. So okay. is there an E right. in the word that you're thinking of? Right. I've written the word down. I've got the letter E, and yes, there is. Okay. And okay. There's an R in the word. Am I right? There's an R. Uh, no. All right. <laughs> I normally, I normally get them all right. Is, is it definitely an E and a G? Is there a G? There is a G. 
And an A. A for apple. Yeah. Uh, I. There's an A. I. <laughs> Is it an I or an A? A for alpha. A for alpha. Okay. So we've got an E. <laughs> it's the word that you're thinking of. Advantages. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, it is. It is. All right, all right, all right. That, that, that's good. I can tell by the way that people, people are all impressed. But listen, I'm going to try and get the, the subject that you searched. Okay. So you searched on a subject. Did you remember if there was a picture of, of, of that subject? There is a picture. Okay. Is it, is it? Okay. Hang on a second. There's a person in that picture. Mm -hmm. And some foliage, maybe a tree. Aye. Branches. Aye, mm -hmm. aye. Mm -hmm. okay, would, you would you tell everybody, this is the big finish, Rani, tell everybody, what did you search for on Wikipedia? I searched for unicorns. Did you? I did. <laughs> That's good because that's what I've written down here. Oh. Unicorns. Yes. Well, John, thank you for joining us and agreeing to this interview. Um, you know, you've got an interesting uh, life story, and I just wondered if you could sort of um, give us a flavour about uh, your background and and how you came to faith initially. Yeah, I um, I was so, I was brought up in it. A Christian family, as such, um, you know, I was brought. I was brought up in a good family. I was sort of taught, you know, um, good morals. But I, I never went to church. My mum and dad never went to church. I think um, my mum, when I was growing up, she she definitely had some faith, but it was never something she particularly passed on. She so I think it was a, quite a personal thing. Um, so I, I sort of grew up not really uh, having much to do with church or, or God or Jesus. I, I um, The only experience I had was to say that most people would get at school, you know, Christmas and Easter. And uh, and it was a bit of a mystery. And then I, I uh, when I when I left school, I went to art college. Um, well, not straight away. I actually I was an apprentice draftsman for three years and then decided uh, I wanted to sort of, you know, I was sick of drawing straight lines, basically, and I wanted to colour things in and draw wiggly lines. So I went to art college and um, I did a foundation course at Middlesbrough College of Art. Uh, and on the course with me was um, a guy called Richard Nicholson. And he played bass guitar in a Christian rock band that were called Giant Killer, who at the time apparently were quite well known in the sort of Christian music scene. Um I don't know how big you have to be to be well known in the Christian music scene, but um, but they, they were quite well known, and um, and I had a bit of a musical background as well, so we befriended each other, um, and at the same time I'd started going out with a girl who was a Christian, um, and sort of one of the provisors of me going out with her was, you know, you've got to come to church, um, and you know sometimes you know two things that get people men to church are food uh, and pretty women and uh, and I got both because they they also fed me at this church so I started going along but for no other reason that it was a social thing to keep her happy but that inspired conversations with Richard um, because I knew he was a Christian because he, he was you know sort of quite open about it and of course he was he was constantly recording songs and doing artwork for his album covers um, and it was basically um the the actual tipping over happened when we went to whitby there's a place in whitby called stains acre hall which is like a, a um a sort of youth hostel type out outward bound type place and we we went there for a week the whole of the foundation course basically to do sort of you know painted of fishing boats and and nets and uh, taking photographs of seagulls and whatever else um and while I was there, that's that's basically one night when I just started asking him lots of questions. Uh, and that's when it all came together. And, and I wouldn't say it all suddenly made sense, but it made enough sense that I thought, 
uh, it, you know, it seems real enough to me that I want to commit, make a commitment. So that was, in in a very sort of nutshell, that's that's the little timeline of when it happened. And of course, you know, then I, uh, I sort of told my girlfriend I'd become a Christian. She was overjoyed, and her mum was pleased because she could pray for somebody else. And uh, um, and then and then and then my faith and my understanding grew from there. So it really was a step of faith rather rather than it all makes sense because i think i think if you wait for it all to make sense you'll never make a commitment because i've been a christian now for blah, 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 years um, and you know over 40 years it'll be now so um and it still doesn't all make sense it's still a mystery to me and there's still lots of things that happen in the world that that i don't understand and i, I don't I, I can't get my head around understanding god uh, and none of us ever will so so yeah I'm, i made that decision purely it was a step of faith and it, i think it always is a step of faith anybody i say anybody who makes it 100 percent in the lodge you know i have heard testimonies of people have heard voices and seen things and uh that probably makes it a lot easier uh, for me it was a step of faith it's interesting john and i think you know, I, I'd agree with you as well that, you know, it doesn't mean to say that you understand everything or that everything makes sense. And I think the the authenticity of, uh, of what you say is really important for people that are listening because, uh, you know, we, we want to be honest with people about what, what's happening in their lives or whatever. But just um, looking back over that period of time, what difference would you say that that uh, christian faith has made and and maybe just say a wee bit about your your family and and, uh, and your wife yeah um it it it's funny really because we, when people say what difference does it make it, it's diff it's difficult to know because i don't know where i'd be now if i hadn't have made that decision um but but certainly just sometimes people talk about Christianity being a crutch um and sometimes people say that in a negative way um but but in in a lot of ways it, it is a crutch but it's a, it's a good crutch because I'm not perfect you know I am I am a limping man so to speak and I think we all are none of us are perfect all of us are a flawed and you know got that, that that's what makes the Christian message so strong is that it it's not a message that you know we are perfect and we can make ourselves perfect it's we are weak broken vessels and and the only way we can achieve anything is by accepting that and and living with it and having jesus there to um to get us through it so um there are so many times in my life when i i really don't know how i'd have coped especially now i mean i i've been a, a professional entertainer for uh 27 years now um and that you know it's a very precarious living you sort of you know you, you're going from sort of hand to mouth and you know, especially this last year you no know, work and wondering what i'm going to do i've had occasions where the car engines blown up and i've got gigs the next week and no money to fix the engine and and god has always stepped in um at, to such an extent that you know people have said well that might have happened anyway or but it's almost beyond coincidence um the way he's always been there for me and you know you know i am married i've got a wife julie who's um she works for a charity called 313 at the moment over here part-time and i've got three kids now who are grown up but just just bringing them up and sort of the wisdom to to cope with all of that it's just it's just everything it's it's like having I mean, we all have friends, we all have people who we rely on, who we can speak to. But there's something about Jesus that is is bigger than all of that. He's like the perfect friend, the perfect person you can turn to. And 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 he'll always he won't always give you what you want, but he'll always give you what you need. And um so, so yeah, I I really don't know, you know, how I'd have got through, you know, and constantly you know there's times when i've messed things up and done things wrong and you know he's lifted me up and supported me and you know healed me and and got me through it um yeah i i just 
you know, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian because of heaven. I'm not a Christian because, you know, I want something after, but I'm a Christian because of, if heaven didn't exist, I would still want to have that relationship with Jesus. You know, if, if it was just about him being with me now on earth and it ended at the end of my life, it would still be worth being a Christian. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Christian because I think, you know, I've got to be good. And if I do that, I get a reward. It's not about a reward then. It's about a reward during my life. And um, yeah, it's, it's been worth every, every minute of it. So John, just to say about 27 years in the entertainment business. Yeah. Um, give us a flavor of what that's been like for you. Cause you, you, you've had some, um, pretty high profile done some pretty high profile stuff during that time but you know just tell us a wee bit about you know some stories from that or and 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 how you found your faith relevant maybe even in some of these situations too yeah um it it is it is a it is a, a funny lifestyle being an entertainer it is uh, it is a mixture and i suppose a lot of jobs are but it is a mixture of immense highs um you know followed by immense lows so you can be you can be in an amazing theater with three thousand people cheering you on and you know, feeling like you're king of the world and an hour later you're you're in a service station drinking a cup of coffee on your own and you know and, and it's all gone and um it is it it can be very humbling but also um it, it, it can be also it can be a great a great feeling as well so um i mean that's another thing where you know just just having jesus to realize that you know my life isn't about the adulation even though that that naturally comes with being an entertainer your job is to get people to laugh and applaud and and to a certain extent your job is to get them to love you when you're on that stage um and so many entertainers you see who when you know they've had fame and, and then it fades suddenly they've got nothing left because it was all about that fame so um so yeah it is an it is an incredible life and and, and the spectrum of gigs that i do i mean about when i went full time i thought i was going to be doing all christian church work is, is what i thought because when i first I was a police officer for 10 years. I don't think we mentioned that, but when I first, which uh, that's another job of high and lows, but when I, when I first left, I thought it was all going to be church and charity work because that's what I was doing while I was in the police. And then a lot of secular work came along, which uh, was a good thing because, you know, financially um, secular work tends to pay more than church work. Um, but 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 it, it also meant that I, I get everything from, a little church hall with trestle tables and 30 people eating tuna buns in front of me to you know the hammersmith apollo um on britain's got talent semi-final with simon cowell stood in front of me and, and and everything in between that so it's uh it's yeah it, it is an amazing life but not as glamorous uh as as many might think you know the vast majority of the time you're in your car driving from one place to the next so um now there's there's quite a lot of folk um that are now a bit you know been been locked down for such a long time and just you know they've been they've been sat in their homes we, we, we just realize sometimes that you know loneliness is a, a big issue for people you know yeah um and we're all kind of longing to to be able to go back to these venues and 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 listen to to the likes of yourself and enjoy joining in and 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 so forth you know and you did touch on this earlier on but i mean for people in the entertainment business this has been a terrible time as you said you know there's been yeah. no work and and um just bringing it right up to date you know how how have you felt how has God helped you through what has been really a bit of a wilderness experience that we're, we're all going through, but people in the entertainment business are particularly having a hard time just now. Just, you know, how has the Lord helped you through that in the, in the last 12 months? Well, I, I think um, in, in two ways, practically and spiritually, obviously, there's two things. I mean, practically, I've sort of, the government have, have thankfully, you know, thrown some money at me. 
Uh, I've also got a few close friends who've, you know, sort of dropped an envelope through the door or whatever. And um, so, so that's because I've, I've sort of, my, my joke throughout it all to, to people is I've got enough money to last me the rest of my life, providing I die in March. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and sort of, uh, and it, it's been a bit like that. It's been a bit like, well, I'm okay, you know, constantly looking, going, well, I can pay my bills to Len and we're, we're okay to Len. Um, and I think I'm, I think I'm okay till the gig start again. Um, so, so from a financial point of view, it, it practically, you know, things have, have been okay. And, uh, and we, you know, we've, we've paid the bills and continue to eat, but spiritually, um, I, I think it, um, I've been able to live off the past. I've been able to have that knowledge that God has never let me down over the last 40 years and you know and, and worse things than this have, have happened to a certain extent uh, not not globally but to me personally you know harder things have happened and god's always been there and always got me through and i think um faith is very much easy to have um, when you've experienced it over and over again uh, you know that the first time you have to trust god you become a christian you have to trust god with a situation it's difficult um but then you know, when it's the hundredth time that you've relied on him and the hundredth time that he stepped up and, and sorted it out, not always when in the moment, you always look back and see where he was quite often in the moment you feel alone. It's a bit, it's a bit like, you know, that poem footprints about the, you know, the guy who has a dream about walking with God and there's two sets of footprints, but in the difficult times, he looks back and only sees one set of footprints and, and God says, that's because I was carrying you then. And it looks like he's disappeared, but he hasn't. He's, he's sort of there. So, so yeah, I think that just past experiences has just helped, um, help with the faith and just real, you know, trust in that it's going it's going to be okay. It's going to be good. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed our program this evening. We do try to bring you as big a variety as possible. But I think the thing that comes across to me from all these people that we have interviewed is that Jesus is relevant to their lives and their situations and has made a big difference in their lives, a positive difference. And so as you listen in, I hope you'll think about whether you, you could let Jesus make a positive difference in your life. And if any of you ever want to chat about that, then talk to some of the folks that invited you on to our fellows program. Now, the next event's going to be on the 27th of, of May, May, and it's going to be very interesting. We have Steph McLeod. Steph was homeless and had serious addiction problems. And through the Bethany program, he came to faith and is completely delivered from his addiction. But he's also a fantastic singer and we're looking forward to him joining us in our May meal. To finish off, I decided that we would um, screen a song that Ayla, who's a young girl in our church, wrote. And she sings it um, in Creep Hill, and she talks about breaking through and God breaking through in our lives, and also refers to the city, the city that we live in, of course, is Perth. And so I thought, as a, as a closing prayer song, this was a good way for us to finish. I hope you enjoy listening to Isla. There's no better place than here within your presence. No Right here and right now we're waiting on you to do what only you can do. So come, break down the walls of our hearts, bring us closer to you, and break off the chains that open. There's no better place And 
See you.